Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Bloodborne. Previously, we cleared the Forbidden Forest and learned that the place had become infested with parasitic snakes uh, that seemed to be infecting the huntsmen in the area. Uh, at the end of the woods, we found the Forbidden Grave where we are standing at this moment, and, if, and it was uh, defended by three shadows of Yarnum, uh, which were snake-infected figures that were cloaked in black and blocking the way to Bergenworth, which is straight ahead. Now that they are out of the way, we can finally enter Bergenworth and hopefully get some answers as to what has been going on here. So, Bergenworth isn't a terribly big area, but uh, there's a lot of lore tied to this place and to the events that are going to be playing out here. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that, uh, is that this, um, this is kind of a no turning back point so if there are things you have not done yet that would you that you would like to do um, this is the chance to do it and so i would highly recommend if you have not gone for instance to uh, to the hypogean jail do that before you do this because you're going to be cut off um, so this is kind of a no turning back point for everything else in the game um, or not literally everything but but to an extent extent a lot of things that we have done so certain areas will not will not revert back to what they were. <laughs> I knew one of those things were out here. I just couldn't remember where it was. Um, so one thing I'm going to point out right away, the enemies here are not your, your furries. No furries here. Um, I just refer to them as arthropod-like beasts, because some of them are very insect-like. Some of them are not insect-like, but still arthropods, so I'm just going to call them arthropod-like beasts. But we've got insect-like dude with bad wings and tons of eyes. And the eyes are kind of a, an important feature. Wow, lantern right after a lantern. And we are in Bergenworth. Uh, arthropod means jointed foot, and it's a it's a name for basically most of the animals that have exoskeletons. Um, so there are two kind of main types of, of animals that have an exoskeleton stage to them. They're called um, ectisids, where they molt. And the arthropods are the ones that have, um, uh, they have like the, it's a chitin-based exoskeleton that covers their bodies. So we're looking at insects, you're looking at um, chelicerates, which are like your arachnids and, and relatives. Uh, there is the myriapods, which are like your millipedes and centipedes, and then there's the crustaceans, which are most of your waterborne um, type critters that have the exoskeletons. But yeah, jointed, jointed foot. Yeah, Daphnia would be a crustacean. And there are two types of, at least two types of arthropod-like creatures here. The one we just saw, plus there's a giant thingy that looks like a centipede of sorts. Kind of looks like a house centipede. Um, we'll see that. It's a lot more creepy looking than it is um, actually dangerous. And that's another insect one ahead of us right there. So if you look at it, it's right above my head. It's got like three little arm things coming off of it that I'm assuming are supposed to be like broken wings in a way. Uh, because I don't know, their eye design doesn't remind me of spiders. It seems more like a hodgepodge of arthropods. And yet their sounds and everything remind me more of an insect. And hey, look. Younger Medaris twin. Medaris? Medaris? Oh, I, thought, I saw him moving. I was like, does he know I'm here? Oh, there's two of them. Sneaky game. Oh, he got me. Oh, that's a frenzy meter. That's bad. Oh, it's building. Okay, Frenzy Meter's going away. So he didn't even damage me during that. He just 
He's just building up my frenzy. <laughs> okay, so you will see the frenzy meter build up eventually. There is an enemy we will run into later in the game that are just awful. Anybody that has ever played this game is like, I know exactly what enemy you're talking about. Um, we'll, we'll see those later. You'll see what happens when the frenzy meter builds. They're quite dangerous enemies. Hey, Stacy. And so this is actually a shortcut door. We're not gonna... I said this place isn't very big, but having that little run back is actually kind of nice. I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss anything up here. The first thing I have on my list of loot is an arcane lake rune and a pearl slug, and there's another one! That's a... Th Where'd you come from? Oh no, they do have wings, look. It's not very good wings. I actually don't know what those things are called. I do believe there's a brain sucker here as well. So I kind of describe this place as having like arthropod-like beasts and uh, slimy beasts. Not slimy, uh, squishy. I like to call them squishy. Most of the beasts in this game are either furry or squishy. And there's the squishy. I really do not like the brain suckers, though. Come on, that sounds squishy, doesn't it? So that spell he's casting is meant to hold me down. You got me, you got me, you got me! No, my insight! There goes my insight. And... He took two insight away from me. <laughs> slimy? He sounds slimy? Okay. I'm gonna continue calling him a squishy, but... Uh, slimy works too. And look, he not only drained over... Oh, there's our American Lake Room. He not only drained, like, a huge chunk of my health, he also took two of my insight. So, that's why I don't like brain suckers. Now, I do believe this door here is locked. I do believe there's also more enemies around this corner. No? Oh, maybe it's just the one that was walking back and forth. And if you look off in the distance, that's the myriapod-like one. So, again, I say arthropod-like beast because the, the, the thingy that was jumping on my head earlier, to me it looked more like an insect-based one. That one's clearly a myriapod-like, so I would say it kind of looks like a house centipede. So myriapod means they have a myriad of legs, so like many legs. And I think the giant millipede has close to a thousand legs. I used to have um, a few of those. I've had about four of those in my life. They're really cool. I don't... Oh, there you are. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, crap. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Not the frenzy. Oh, that's coming from the big guy. Okay, they really don't like me here. <laughs> I'm not making friends. See, that's an arcane attack. Oh, no, don't, don't lock on the head, ah! Okay, let's get away from that, whatever that is. I don't know whether that front side can actually deal damage or not. I just make a point of not letting them in front of me. 
Because I feel like it would deal damage. I hear something. I think I know what that was. Okay, I can't hear it anymore. There's there's a platform above us. It's like a deck. Oh, I hear it again. You hear that? Hear the creaking? I know what that is. We're going to see what that is soon-ish. I say soon-ish because uh, it depends on how much I die here. This is why we have a shortcut, actually. Sedatives, okay. I think that's our first batch of sedatives. These are amazing. Uh, sedatives, liquid medicine concocted at Bergenworth, calms the nerves. Those who delve into the arcane fall all too easily to madness, and thick human blood serves to calm the frayed nerves of these inquisitive minds. Naturally, this often leads to a reliance on blood ministration. So the sedatives essentially counter the frenzy, um, the, the frenzy status. And I think, I don't really know the best way to, to describe frenzy, but I think it's supposed to be like how they describe madness. I think that's the idea, that you're, it's kind of like you're losing your mind. And it also goes, goes hand in hand with your health. So those are actually really nice to have, especially when certain enemies build that meter very quick. Now the door is open, um, we're going to do the shortcut, but before I picked something else up, what was it? There was a rune I picked up, um, Arcane Lake. Alright, this transcription of the Great One's Inhuman Voices ripples like a watery reflection. This rune means lake and those who, and, uh, those who memorize it enjoy reduced arcane damage. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, that's actually useful for an, for, for uh, an upcoming fight. Um, great volumes of water serve as the bulwark guarding sleep and an auger of the Eldritch Truth. Overcome this hindrance and seek what is yours. Hey there, Clint. Um, so there's a common theme in the runes in this game that if you can kind of pay attention to what you pick up, um, lakes and water tend to become very common in terms of what you get. So we have... Um, Let's see, I think they're all on the bottom. So we've got the Lake Rune, Arcane Lake, Dissipating Lake, Deep Sea, Clear Deep Sea. So you'll notice a trend in that. All right. Now the reason it's really important that you trigger that, that back door access here, back door permission required. Okay, you always act, ask permission before entering the back door. Um, just because there's actually a hunter in here that's, if I remember, has, is quite formidable. A hunter that uses arcane arts, some hard-hitting ones. So just be aware of that. This might take a few tries. I'm going to skip items here for now and just go for the hunter. I should probably go and get that summon, but there they are. So I'm not going to say what group this hunter belongs to, but if you look at the outfit, it is very clearly the healing church in a, in a form, but it's not the white garb. Oh, come on. I might just need to go hand to hand on this one. Ooh, okay, it's got the mist thingy. Ooh, okay. Yeah, watch out for the arcane moves. I'm stuck! Let's see if I can get a visitor on this. They're not working on this one. Got it. Okay, that's not dealing much damage either, though. Oh, I 
cannot remember what that mist is. I think that's an arcane tool. So the tentacle attack is actually quite interesting. I don't think we've come across that item yet. Don't get hit by it though, it's an instant stun. So that hunter is actually wearing a really useful item, uh, item, a really useful set um, that I will be keeping on me once we get to it later. It's got the, I believe, the highest arcane defense that I'm familiar with in the game. All right, so there's a lot of stuff in here. That should be our last major enemy. Can you get down that somehow? I'm not familiar with it. Um, so I have a list. Uh, four items and a note. I feel like there should be more than one note here. What? Oh, there's eyes in it. Okay, that makes sense, actually. I knocked some of them over, too. I'm going to bet that one of the items is in here, and I think it's the Pearl Slug. Pearl Slug. Okay, this is actually really important. That is material, yeah. Uh, Pearl Slug. Material used in a Holy Chalice Ritual. Of all the strange life forms that reside in the nooks and crannies of the old labyrinth, the slugs are clear signs of the left behind great ones. And if you look at them, they actually li literally look like slugs. So <laughs> I think that's really cool. I'm a big fan of arthropods, or arthropods. I'm a big fan of invertebrates, if you can't tell. Um, so slugs, you're looking at mollusks, which are include all like the snails and slugs in the gastropod group. Um, then there's the bivalves, which are like your clams and oysters and whatnot, and the cephalopods, which are your, uh, like squid and, and octopi and stop talking about animals. <laughs> it's very obvious where my allegiance is, isn't it? So there's also another shortcut of a sort here that goes out the other side. I guess you could call it a shortcut. I don't really use it. Um... I actually have quite a few echoes again just from that. Now notice um, this summon is not red. The other one is that I found outside is red. I do believe the red ones again... Oh, Damien of Mensis. So connected to the school of Mensis, no doubt. Um, the other summon outside was a red colored one. And again, I, oh, there's another one. I believe the red colored ones are all connected to the, to the league since I'm wearing their impurity rune. Uh, Henrik. Okay. Student uniform and trousers. And so again, kind of reinforcing the fact we're at Bergenworth College. Locked. That's the Lunarium, I think it's called. That's the balcony area where you could hear that creaking sound. All right. When the red moon hangs low, the line between man and beast is blurred. And when the great ones descend, a womb will be blessed with child. I should have made a note of that one. I just realized I could bring that up at a certain point. Today, actually. Tonight. In this stream, not the next one. So there should be two other items. I hear, I hear squishies. Lunarium key. Oh, there it is. Lunarium key, key to the Lunarium facing the lake on the second floor of Bergenworth College. In his final years, Master Willem was fond of the lookout and the rocking chair that he kept there for meditation. In the end, it is said he left his secret with the lake. Interesting. There's a lot to unpackage in that in that one item. And but there is a one of the arthropod dudes above us.
Got it. And if you recall to the previous episode, we could see Bergenworth. Uh, ooh, empty fa- phantasm shell. We could see Bergenworth from the distance. This is the um, observatory that we were looking at. So that's when we were on the, not the last episode, it was actually the one before that, when we were on the windmills, the windmill tower. Okay, so let's get down. Now the empty phantasm shell is actually a trophy linked item. So this one's linked to um, arcane. Empty phantasm shell, empty invertebrate shell that is said to be a familiar of the great one, of a great one. The Healing Church has discovered a great variety of invertebrates, or phantasms, as they are called. Shells with slime still harbor arcane power, and can be rubbed on weapons to imbue them with their strength. Now, I do believe the phantasm shell essentially uses, I want to say silver bullets, possibly, as a source of giving your weapon arcane damage. Um, I see a lot of people use this in general, so if you want to pump some points into Arcane to be able to use this, I'd say go ahead and do it. I don't know how much it takes, and I don't know how to check that. If anybody knows, please let me know, and I can kind of bring that up at some point. Oh, maybe that's it right there. It says 15 on Arcane, and I only have 6, so I can, obviously can't use that. Uh, that must be it right there, which is the little 15 in the bottom right corner next to the star. Um, so I've actually never used much of the arcane tools in this, but that is actually a pretty nice one from what I've seen with other, other people. I don't think it levels beyond that. I think it's just like a one-time use thing. You use it, you get the arcane ability. It's kind of like using fire paper or bolt paper. Um, yeah, but just instead of adding fire or bolt, it adds arcane damage. So kind of nice to have. A lot of enemies are weak to arcane. So Now that we have access to the Narium... This is what we were hearing from down below. So he's pointing us towards the edge of the balcony. Now this is um, supposed to be, I believe, Master Willem. And you might think, we just read, in his final years, Master Willem was fond of the lookout and the rocking chair that he kept there for meditation. In the end, it is said he left his secret with the lake. So why he's still alive? I would say that's probably connected to the secrets here. Now, you, you don't have to do anything with him. He's not a threat. I don't think he's an evil person by any means. Everything we've learned about Master Willem so far I would say otherwise. He does drop an item, though, so... I, a secret symbol left by Carol Rinsmith of Bergenworth. The transcription of I as spoken by the left behind great ones allows one to make additional discoveries. I symbolize the truth Master Willem sought in his research, disillusioned by the limits of human intellect. Master Willem looked to beings from higher planes for guidance and sought to line his brain with eyes in order to elevate his thoughts. So I wasn't just cruelly trying to kill him there. I feel like that's a really important bit of information, and since this is a first playthrough, this is a new game playthrough, I figured let's go for the most bang for your buck and get as many items as possible. And that's where you learn the lore. So if you recall, uh, Willem was the was a provost at Brigham with College and well-respected on top of that. Um, as we just learned, he was obsessed with the truth and seeking Eldridge knowledge. We've already kind of known that to some extent. Um, now, Eldridge knowledge is kind of another term for insight, and insight allows us to see things that we otherwise could not see. And I previously had likened insight to 
I, I kind of compared it to my botany class that I taught years ago. Um, my students would come to me, especially near like the end of the semester, and they said it, it was weird. Like, they would get really excited over really minor things, like they'd see mosses or ferns and get really excited because they knew what they were, and you know they never would have thought twice about that stuff. And I mean, to me, that's how I like an insight. Like the reason they saw that stuff and that they appreciated it is because they had studied it and learned about it in lab. And then they go into the world, and they, now they, they know to look for it. And, and I think that's kind of a beautiful thing. And I can say that, um, you know, holds true for myself as well. Um, I always found stuff like that to be interesting, and the more um, I kind of expanded on my knowledge base of things that you find out in the world, I started to see a little bit more. Uh, so that's kind of how I like in that. Now, it said in the room that Willem wanted to line his brain with eyes to elevate his thoughts. Note that the arthropod-like creatures we've been running into have eyes all over their head. Um, so I think that's a connection to, to such. And there's been mention of blindfolding. The hunter that was inside, the one linked to the healing church, I said I wasn't going to mention what they were a part of quite yet, because we have not seen that outfit yet. Um, notice they were wearing a head blind. The, the mask they had on their head was covering their eyes. And if you notice Willem before I kill them, <laughs> uh, sorry Willem, rest in peace. Um, he, um, this guy's been alive for who knows how long and I just destroyed him. Um, we'll be nicer the, in, in New Game Plus to, to these people. But he, he um, essentially he had a cover over his eyes as well. So that was kind of one of the, one of the things he was doing. So clearly there's some, you know, the, they went about things very differently. Uh, between him and Lawrence, the one that left the left this place and started the healing church. Um, now, we've been hearing the term great ones a lot, and this is where we're going to start digging into them a little bit more, because uh, that term pops up here and there, but we still really didn't know much about them. And so now by talking to Willem and kind of reading about this stuff, I mentioned he looked to beings from higher planes for insight, and that the Tumero chalice that led into the or that they, res that they pulled out of the um, labyrinths below Bergenworth, um, had some kind of holy medium, and they, they, that they used that medium for the blood healing. So the holy medium, uh, like I said, was discovered under Bergenworth, and they, uh, they moved it to the upper cathedral ward, which is the other of the two places we've been wanting to go, so Bergenworth being one, where we are right now, and the upper cathedral ward we still have not gained access to. Um, so another point I wanted to kind of make on... on Willem itself is that when we picked up the rune workshop tool, um, that's how we learned that runesmith Carol was trying to transcribe uh, the, uh, they refer to as inhuman utterings of the great ones into these runes. So he's kind of taking the, this unheard voice of the great ones and putting it into a physical form, the runes, and then we're using that to grant ourselves, you know, abilities essentially. And so I, some people I know have pointed out that he would probably, I don't, I don't think he, he was connected with Carol anymore at this point, but he probably would have respected him for doing that because he didn't resort to blood administration. He was doing something a little different. Um, now, the pearl slugs in the empty phantasm shelves have been pointing, um, have been pointed out as being evidence of the Great Ones. And again, that hunter that we met inside was using something to blast tentacles at us. Um, so, you know, just kind of making that connection there. So the holy medium in this old blood that we're referring to ties back to the great ones. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make here. And the great ones um, that we've been hearing about are just kind of referred to as cosmic beings and, or those of extreme power and, and being also as multidimensional beings. Um, so kind of some stuff that, um, just, just some stuff that, you know, we've been reading about and I kind of wanted to elaborate, it, elaborate on that a little bit. Now, another thing when it comes to Bergenworth and the Healing Church is that they're both kind of have a similar objective. They're trying to commune with these great ones, uh, but they're going about it very differently. So Bergenworth um, is considered forbidden by the Healing Church. Remember that Bergenworth was kind of in Master Willem's court and Lawrence left, so they've kind of separated. But clearly something, you know, clearly the the... The old blood led to the scourge of beasts, but here it doesn't seem like things have turned out very well either. So something he must have gone wrong here too, because this place isn't clearly isn't what it used to be. I mean, we've come across what two relatively normal people. I don't know if I'd even call Willem normal at this point. 
and plus everything else has been turned into some kind of weird beast that's just not it's not a furry anymore and now it's a squishy so um so the healing church um, is thought to then have like a secret objective it's not really there to heal people they're trying to do the same thing that Bergenworth was doing they wanted to learn from the great ones and commune with them and probably ascend their mor their mortality or whatever they are and become like these great ones so um that that's kind of some of what i had to say on that we are going to talk a little bit more about the great ones um but first we're going to jump off this balcony that probably sounds like a bad idea that's what he was telling us to do though so we're going to do it and i just want to point out that that's quite a beautiful beautiful shot there and i probably should go and oh looky i should probably go and use my echoes or at least restock on my items. But I'm just gonna jump in and try this. I have Yusefka's blood vial. Let's take that. I don't know if I have much else worth using at this point. I don't really wanna waste my bolt paper on this. Um, we'll, we'll just try this and see how it goes. So we have a bean in front of us that also has a bunch of eyes. It actually looks like it has eyes on its body too, not just on the head. Uh, so this is Rom, a very key player in the story. I just want to point out that Rom is not being aggressive towards us, which I think is really interesting. But yes, we have to kill Rom. I feel bad for doing this, honestly. So the head is protected. Oh! Dog pile, dog pile, dog pile! <laughs> Take out the spiders here. And hope that Rom doesn't lash out against me. Where is he? Oh no no no. Okay. Let's let's not worry about the spiders. Rom's angry. So Rom does no mostly no physical damage. Um, as long as you're at distance, you're looking at arcane damage. The spiders will attack you, but obviously. So if you have the patience for it, take them out. Don't hit the spiders head on. Their head protects them. Go for the back. Keep an eye on Rom whenever the body moves. Get prepared for uh, some arcane to come your way. have patience for it. Pick up the spiders, otherwise run up and start whacking at Rom. So if Rom rears up on its hind legs or body like that, that's when the arcane crystals or whatever the heck those are come raining down. If it kind of does 
the upside down thingy like that. They shoot up from around, so it's kind of an AoE attack. As you probably noticed, the enemies here are dealing quite a bit of damage. You don't need to kill the spiders. I'm just getting them out of my way. Rom will disappear another time if you let her. Well, not if you let her, she will. <laughs> Once we uh, cut her health down a bit. And notice the hits take a lot longer if you get, go from head on. avoid a fourth encounter like that. Every time she moves, she spawns more spiders. That was a bad move. Come on. I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive with me now too. So this might end quickly. Alright. Ritual secret broken. Seek the nightmare newborn. Uh, so there's a little bit of stuff to unpackage from that. I'm going to, for now, ignore the, the elephant in the room at the top of the screen. <laughs> 
If you notice, Rom dropped an item there. It's important. Kin Cold Blood. Uh, cold Blood of inhuman kin of the cosmos, brethren of the great ones, used to gain unspeakable blood echoes. Dare not to delve into the world beyond humanity. The Eldritch Truth touched upon long ago at Bergenworth. Also notice that we are hearing the cries of an infant. Or a baby. W whatever your preference. So, um, the note said, Ritual broken, seek the nightmare newborn. Uh, so we have a new objective of sorts. Uh, so that was Rom the Vacuous Spider. Um, recall the note in Bergenworth. It said that the Bergenworth Spider, uh, or note about Bergenworth early on, said the Bergenworth Spider hides all manner of rituals and keeps our lost master from us. A terrible shame. It makes my head shudder uncontrollably. This is something we found very early in the game. I can't remember exactly where that was, but I'm talking like Central Yarnum. If you go back long enough, I think it's at the um, between the Tomb of Odin and Odin Chapel where we found that one. Um, so it, it hides all manner of rituals, so it means it's been keeping secrets from us, essentially. Um, now the term, or the name, Rom the Vacuous Spider, um, you know, vacuous is supposed to mean lack of thought or intelligence, mindless, empty, something like that. So they're basically calling Rom stupid, and I, I don't really understand that. I don't know why. Um, the fact that Rom had King Coldblood um, implies that Rom is not a great one. So if you, if, over reading that description, let's go look at it one more time. Uh, brethren of the great ones. So they're not, they're not, uh, Ram is not a great one. It's kin are considered brethren of the great ones. Um, so there's a very, um, there's kind of a foggy distinction between great ones and kin. Um, the way I understand it is that um, there are true great ones and then there are kin. The kin are basically an ascended uh, form of humanity where, where they have been elevated, where people have been elevated to a level of a great one. Uh, but that the kin are still considered lesser beings and that they're bound to a singular plane of existence because the great ones are considered to be multi-dimensional multi-dimensional beings um, now one thing that's kind of interesting about this that i like to bring up is that um, beast enemies are weak to fire whereas kin enemies tend to be weak to bolt so the kind of general um, adage for this is that use fire if it's hairy use bolt if it's squishy <laughs> so um, I like that. I like that way of thinking about things. Now you will notice that my insight has gone up considerably. Um, ideally, at this point in the game, you kind of want to be at forty, because that thing above us that you can kind of see waving around should not necessarily be visible at this point. Um, so I thought it had to be at forty, but usually I would have more insight by now. But we've been kind of spending some of it on items. Um, but anyway, so we've gained a lot of insight, and basically what this has done is by defeating Rom, uh, Rom essentially set a veil over Yarnum to keep the truth hidden from the citizens. I believe the idea is that the citizens would go mad if they knew the truth. I mean, we'll, I'll kind of reveal what that is here in a second. Um, but by having our insight elevated, we can now see these. Um, so these are referred to as amygdala. That's how the game pronounces it. That's why I say it that way. Um, it is named after the um, organ, or not organ, but part of the brain. Um, so that is one of the types of great ones out there, the amygdala. Um, they are all over the city right now, and we're, we're going to kind of see that as we start moving through. So when I say when the red moon comes in, things change. Um, so by killing Rom, we have broken the veil. We have brought forth what they call the red moon or blood moon. Uh, we've raised our insight, and now that we've done this, we can we can see the great ones, and so can everybody else, essentially. And so things are going to change a little bit because of this. Um, so now, when that happened, we were still at Moonside Lake, and in the distance, we could see a woman that we tried to approach. Um, she is going to be important to this. We will run across her later. I'm not really going to comment on who she is yet. Um, I do want to refer back to a couple of notes, though, that referred to this. Um, one was a note we found in Old Yarnum that said the red moon hangs uh, the red moon hangs low, and beasts rule the streets. Are we left no other choice than to burn it to cinders or burn it all to cinders? Um, that was the note about uh, Old Yarnum being burned to the ground, and they had mentioned the red moon at that point. The other time we heard about this was in um, Hypogean Jail when we were in Yahargul Unseen Village. Uh, so the note said, "Madmen toil surreptitiously in rituals to beckon the moon." uncover their secrets. 
And so they're mentioning rituals, so I do believe that's supposed to be implying that the um, school mensis in Yahargul Unseen Village were the ones performing rituals, um, Ram being a part of that, I would say, to some extent. And they said to, to beckon the moon. So my, one of my thoughts on that is bring forward, forward the red moon, uh, but there's also something else we're going to find in Yahargul which we're going to go to next, and so we'll see a little bit more of that. And so there, I, I, I don't know if there's a connection, strong connection between the two of them or not. I do know there's a connection between the, the, the Mensis school and the Great Ones. That I do know. So that is, like I said, Amygdala. That is an adult version of it. We will see lesser versions of this as well. Um, the lesser versions don't have the tentacles coming out of the face or head or whatever we want to call that. So we are um, in the chapel that's off to the right of the, of the Grand Cathedral right now. That's where this brought us. So after defeating Rome, we were brought to this point. Um, that gate before was closed, and if you remember when I ran up to it, um, there was an arm that tried to grab me, and that's the amygdala. So there was one of those outside of Odin Chapel as well. So if you go this way, we would actually head back towards Grand Cathedral and Cathedral Ward, but we're not going to do that. So if you want to get a better idea of what we're looking at, that's our amygdala. So which I thought was a really cool reveal the first time I played this. <laughs> I was not expecting that to be sitting there. So. Um, straight ahead, like I said, is Yahargul Unseen Village. Uh, that place was blocked off before, so that's why I mentioned going to the Hypogean Jail ahead of time, if you have not yet, because now we cannot get to those items that were there before. So let's run through. Now, we do have the Tonsil Stone, so if you let the Amygdala grab you, you will be brought to a different world. But we're not going to do that yet. And feel free to do that at any time. It's not, you're, at this point, you should be in good condition for it. You may note the explosion sound when they die from the explosion of blood. Um, don't waste your time on these enemies, they will respawn. I just want to get to the lantern. I'll explain them in the next episode. Uh, before we do that... As you can see, the amygdala are all over the place. So we can now see what's... We can see the reality of the world. Because our insight is up, we can see them. We've broken the ritual, so, you know, we, that's another reason we can see them. We can now hear the babies cry. But, that's where we're going to, you know, leave things off in this world. So I'm not just pausing for effect there. Um, notice the music has changed. So if you backtrack on that a bit, now that our insight is higher, the music, the music here has shifted. Uh, so I'm going to use the Ken Cold Blood. So very nice. Definitely worth using. Um, I don't think we had any other new items other than the sedatives that we've already read about. I'm going to stock away my empty phantasm shell. I 
don't think there's anything else that we need at this point. Surgical gloves. I oh, I was going to sell those. That's why those are out. All right. Um, let's sell the surgical gloves. I don't need those. So remember the surgical gloves for the white garb hunt, uh, white garb church hunter set and black garb church hunter set are the same. That's why I'm selling those. Uh, let's do a little bit of uh, fashion born. Let's check out the student uniform. Oh, no, take those off. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Why don't we wear cool uniforms like that in school? <laughs> Clint, we need to demand changes at the school. College has to change a few things. We need to wear robes. This is the way things should be, all right? We have to hold a petition for this. <laughs> yeah, I know you've been saying this, so I fully agree with you on that. Let us um, stock some stuff away. Uh, let's see, uh, the Phantasm Shell first. Like I said, if you're okay with expending some of your points towards Arcane, the Phantasm Shell is definitely worth doing. We will be playing around with that probably a bit in New Game Plus, so. I definitely plan on doing some arcane stuff in New Game Plus. Um, and there we go. School uniform. I think I'm going to keep all my runes the way they are. There's nothing to upgrade quite yet. Um, one of the reasons to go to use the tonsil stone and go to the nightmare frontier is for upgrades. So, if you do want to go there early and get those upgrades, feel free to do that at any point. You could do it before, um, before dealing with Rome. You could do it after. It doesn't really matter. So, did we get any new ones? I don't think we have. No, and this one. No. I think we're good. I think we are good. Uh, I don't think there's anything new in the shop that I need, but we might as well take a look. Um, oh, we can buy bullet paper now. That's nice. I don't think that was there before. I'm not. I don't recommend spending insight though. There are trade-offs to having high insight. It does make things a bit more tricky and challenging in the game, but you know. I don't, I don't feel like it's that noticeable at this point in the game. So, uh, I, I'm sure the doll's going to have some commentary at this point, because I have a note about that. Um, so we'll talk to the doll, we're going to level up, and then we'll close things out. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. Okay, so I could probably do about three levels here. Yeah. What did I say I was going to do? I'll do strength, get my strength as cap. And let's get vitality to... I don't know, the vitality I don't really feel like is holding me back at this point. I must say, for newcomers to the game, vitality is probably more important to you than um, things like endurance and skill. If you're using a strength, more strength build, you know, choose your own path how you will. If you're having a lot of problems with health, but keep in mind that, like I said, the 30 endurance is really something that I feel was um, a big help with with my playstyle. So I, I, and I'm going to bump that up to 40 eventually, and I'm going to leave it at 40 permanently. Um, but then we can. I want to start evening out skill. But let's try to get vitality to. What what do I have vitality at? Thirty at least. I'll do thirty at least. I want to get vitality up higher than that. But 
I think we're going to go for a full 50 on Vitality, Strength, and Skill before I start doing the Arcane. And by that point, we're going to be in New Game Plus, so... Good hunter. Your presence somehow soothes. I sense the ancient echoes. They course your veins. So if you recall, when we first talked to her, she had mentioned our sickly spirit. I think that's supposed to mean that we're getting better now that we're, you know, we have higher insight, we're at a higher level. I think that means that the blood echoes are making us better in some way. Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. All right, that is a good place to close things out. Uh, to recap, we finally had the chance to see Bergenworth and explore the area. There were multiple arthropod-like and squishy beasts, as opposed to our regular hairy beasts, and some of them with many eyes, which we learned a bit more about um, why we've been seeing that. Uh, there was also a hunter wearing a unique church outfit, and several arcane weapons, items, and notes that we found around the area referring to the Great Ones, which we you know, really haven't learned much about at this point. Uh, we also found Master Willem, who appeared to be blindfolded, uh, did not speak to us, but directed us to the edge of the Lunarium. Uh, we learned that Willem was obsessed with seeking the Eldritch Truth, or as we know it, Insight, um, so increasing Insight and that he wanted to blind his brain with eyes um, to elevate his thoughts. Uh, hence the arthropod-like beasts and why they had so many eyes, or at least a, a few of them did. Um, Willem was looking uh, to beings from higher planes, as it said, um, ever since they found the holy medium in the labyrinths beneath Bergenworth. Um, we've, been, we've known about this for a while, we just didn't quite know what they were. And as it turns out, the holy medium and the old blood that he warned Lawrence about um, you know, came from these multi- dimensional and godlike cosmic beings, as they've been referred to, known as Great Ones. Um, now, Bergenworth and the Healing Church essentially want, want to, or wanted to, uh, I, I, I don't know whether we should really be referring to them in past tense or present tense or both, uh, but they wanted to connect with the Great Ones, uh, but of course their methods are different. So, uh, Willem keeps talking about kind of looking into oneself, he talks about lining the brain with eyes, he talks about increasing insight, Whereas the healing church has been looking more towards using the old blood from the holy medium and using blood healing as kind of a method towards connecting with them. So they clearly had different methods and they clearly had different outcomes. So if you look at the healing church, we know, we know what happened there. I mean, first they had the ashen blood, then they had the scourge of beasts. Things were not working out for them. They still are not working out for them. That's, that's why we have the night of the hunt. And now we've seen Bergenworth wasn't quite looking ship shape either. Uh, so their place seems to have fallen in hard times. And of course, it's considered uh, forbidden ground by the healing church. Um, and I kind of wonder if there's a connection there between Bergenworth and the snake infected people in the, in the forest. Because uh, I don't think there's anything really ever pointing to why the people in the forest were infected by snakes. You know, is it related to any of this or is it just kind of its own thing? So after meeting Willem, we jumped over the balcony and into some alternate dimension known as Moonside Lake, where we found Rum, the vacuous spider. Uh, she was not aggressive, but of course we fought and killed her anyway, because, you know, we're probably a horrible person at this point. Uh, Rom's death broke a veil she had over Yarnum and brought in the Red Moon, or Blood Moon as some people refer to it, showing us uh, some of the great ones known as Amygdala that have been hanging over the city uh, this entire time. So we have not been able to see them, we've only been able to see an essence of them when they tried grabbing us, essentially. Now, Rom, as we discovered, was not likely a true Great One, since she dropped the Kin Cold Blood, uh, cause, because we also learned that the Kin are considered lesser beings um, that ascended their humanity thanks to the Great Ones, um, and, you know, are, are therefore not true Great Ones. Um, and we, uh, so we, we don't really know if we've seen any great ones outside of the amygdala. I think that is our first one we've officially seen at this point. Um, lastly, we were given uh, somewhat of a new objective. So we still have our previous objective of seeking pale blood, of course, because we still don't know quite what that is. Um, but with the ritual secret broken, um, killing Rom broke this ritual secret, revealed to us the world, the amygdala, and has changed a few things, brought in the red moon. 
uh, and we now have a new objective of seeking the nightmare newborn, whatever that is. So we don't, uh, we do have options as far as where to go next. Um, I'm going to personally suggest pressing into Yahargul Unseen Village, uh, and then eventually we will circle back to Cathedral Ward um, so we can access places that we don't currently have access to because we will get access to them eventually. So, <clears throat> with that being said, let us close things out. I will be continuing tonight, so if you're here live, stick around. And otherwise, thank you all for joining, and I will see you all later.